Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Robertson, and today I'm bringing you all a video that has been requested by quite a few of my viewers over the last few weeks, where I've been asked to go over the importance of good turret placement. Bearing in mind that this video will be focusing primarily on either kinetic or energy based turrets and should be considered separate from any videos regarding spinal mounts, broadsides or missile based weaponry. But why is turret placement important I hear you say? Surely I can just slap as many turrets wherever and however I want on my ship? Yes, of course you can, there's nothing stopping you from doing just that. But don't be surprised if you end up with a spacecraft that costs a fortune in survival mode and ends up coming out of a battle with many of your turrets not even having fired a shot. Think of all that space and resources you could have saved. Not to mention the extra damage you could have done to the enemy, if only you'd taken the time to place your turrets more sensibly. But that's assuming you come out of the fight in one piece of course. As you've seen from any of the 1v1 battles I've posted online, good turret placement can quite often mean the difference between life and death. Now of course this doesn't just apply to space engineers, this also applies to other games and simulations including Empyrean Galactic Survival, Avorion and many of the other upcoming open world building sandbox space type games out there. So let's begin by looking at three of the most common mistakes that we're likely to come across with regards to turret placement and ship design. Number 1. Turret Spam Sadly, this is something that's always been an issue, especially with games like Space Engineers, where unless you're using modded weaponry, you're stuck to only being able to use the small vanilla turrets that come with the base game. In fact, in Space Engineers you only have rocket turrets, 25mm Gatling turrets and the 5.56 anti-personnel turrets, also named interior turrets as this is where you're most likely to find them. All of which have an abysmally short range of 800m, which is fair enough for the 5.56mm turrets, but in real life 25mm and 200mm rockets have an effective range sometimes in excess of 3km. Probably much more in space given that there's no bullet drop, meaning you only have to worry about dispersion or bullet spread in layman's terms. Combine that with the fact that unlike real life, the turrets and space engineers don't take up space inside the ship's hull. Instead, they only take up a small amount of space on the exterior and even the ammo itself doesn't take up much room in the cargo containers, nor does it need any special type of storage. Which means that we can quite often end up with designs like the travesty that you can see before you now. Great in creative mode, but a nightmare to build in survival. But just looking at the design in front of you, you can see that it has so many turrets packed so close together that many of them block the other's line of sight. And don't even get me started on those turrets in the middle, which can only fire in a limited 180 degree arc due to the way they've been placed. What on earth was the creator thinking? Placing your turrets like this is especially an issue in Space Engineers, because as many of you have seen from a recent post on my YouTube channel, there is still a recurring bug in the game where turrets have a horrible tendency of shooting their own vessels by accident, including other turrets. So having a lot of them packed close together is just asking for trouble. More so as, of the time of this recording, the Gatling and interior turrets cannot have their friendly fire disabled, unlike the missile turrets. Sadly, designs like these are something that are still all too common, both on the Steam Workshop and on content websites, and is something that with a little thought and common sense can easily be avoided. And this is definitely something that you want to avoid as excessive amounts of turrets means that when the fighting starts, more projectiles will have to be calculated and more particles, including tracers and explosions, will need to be rendered too, which in turn can take its toll on both your CPU and graphics card. Number 2. Space is an ocean so let's build ourselves a boat. Yeah, unfortunately this is a trope that has sadly bored itself into the hearts and minds of many content creators over the last 50 years or so, and we've got the likes of Star Trek and to a lesser extent Star Wars to blame for that. You see, unlike the ocean going vessels of yesteryear, spacecraft not only have to fight on a three dimensional battle space, they cannot sink. 
That's right, unless they lose power, propellant, fuel or ammunition, spacecraft can and will fight on until there's very little left of them. Or until there's too few people inside willing to keep on fighting, in which case they would most likely surrender. That's provided, of course, you're not fighting against an AI-controlled drone. As you can see from the ship shown in this screenshot, almost all of its weaponry is located on the top, with only a few smaller guns on the sides. Again, because they've been sunk into the side of the hull for some reason, this limits their firing arc. There are no turrets on the underside. Why? Unless I'm mistaken, it doesn't look like it's designed to land on a planet's surface, or to sail on the sea, which is the only reason why you would limit the amount of turrets on the underside of a vessel, because you need to make space for the landing gear. But as it stands now, it's got a massive blind spot on its belly, which it really doesn't need to have. All because the creator wanted it to look like an old-fashioned wet navy battleship. It even has a bridge sticking out of the top complete with windows and other structural weaknesses that's just asking to be blown away shortly after hostilities commence. Now, some of the more eagle-eyed among you may have also spotted that while the middle turret can barely fire over the one in front, that large turret at the back is being blocked by the ones in front of it, meaning that it can only engage targets that approach from either the side or above. What I will say, though, is that unlike the previous example, at least this spacecraft has large turrets. So that's something at least, which brings me on to the next topic. Number 3. Ignoring the evolution of big guns and super-firing turrets. Quick history lesson for some of the younger ones among you here, but back at the turn of the last century, there was something of an evolution in warship design. I'm talking about wet navy warships, not spacecraft, just in case you got confused. For the most part, pre-dreadnought battleships, like the one on the top there, had very few large turrets. Instead, they tended to have a lot of smaller ones scattered around in casemates throughout the hull. There were a few exceptions to this, of course, but very few naval vessels had more than one or two large turrets back in those days, at least until the arrival of the HMS Dreadnought, which pretty much changed the face of naval warfare. From shortly before the onset of World War I up until the end of World War II, warships focused on having the most largest, most long-ranged and accurate guns as possible, with only a few smaller ones used to engage the smaller naval vessels and for anti-aircraft purposes. The benefit of having a few larger turreted guns instead of lots of smaller ones was that the ocean-going warships could now engage at longer ranges and inflict significantly more damage than their predecessors. This essentially rendered the pre-dreadnought battleships obsolete. Another change that took place during this period was that turrets were either offset, or more likely, placed just above and behind the one in front of it, also known as superfiring. This enabled the superfiring turrets to engage all the targets located within its frontal firing arc without them being obscured by any of the other turrets on the vessel. The ship's superstructure would of course still get in the way, but at the time this was something that was just considered unavoidable. We also see this development not only in ocean-going vessels, but also in armoured fighting vehicles, i.e. tanks. So it's pretty much a given that this is something that we will continue to see even into the realm of space warfare, especially in a scenario where turrets are going to be a prominent feature. Now that I've talked about some of the common mistakes regarding turret placement and their relation to ship design, let's take a look at some of the good and bad examples, and my thoughts regarding them. It's my hope that many of you here, especially those that are looking to make your own creations, are able to take away some useful tidbits of information from this when it comes to designing your own vessels. Now, these are just my own opinions, and you're all more than welcome to disagree with them, and as such, you should feel free to design your own vessel any way that you want. First off, we have this very impressive looking cruiser with a spinal mount. Now, these are perfectly valid types of weapons, and they have their own pros and cons, but as I said earlier, I'm not going to get into that topic for this video. Instead, let's take a look at the turret placement. Now, fair enough, while these may be considered secondary turrets, why the heck would you place them in the way shown here? They can't aim downwards more than 10, maybe 20 degrees because, well, the turret base is in the way. 
and that's just a natural restriction of it being a turret, and they can't aim behind themselves either in this ship because the rest of the vessel is there. So they're essentially limited to a 180 degree arc of fire to the left and right, and an arc of about 80 to maybe 90 degrees up and down, if they're lucky. The same applies more or less to the smaller ones at the front of the ship. What I would be inclined to do is move those turrets onto a flat surface, like the top and bottom of the ship, although you could more or less stick them to the sides as well if you wanted, and you had the free space to do so. What this will do is essentially give the turrets an almost 340 degree arc of fire, as well as about 100 degrees of elevation and depression which is substantially better than before, more so as almost all those turrets would now be able to engage the same target if it appeared to the front or the sides of the vessel. Now, even though it's not the most practical of designs, I have seen turret layouts and ship designs similar to this one pop up quite a lot recently, so I'm not sure whether or not this is some kind of pop culture reference to a new game or animated series, but hey, if it is, I'm sure some of you will let me know in the comment section below. Now this one is another example of a spaceship that, while it looks cool, it isn't the most practical of designs. And again, the choice of turret placement is a little odd, because this vessel is a T or Y shape. Yet, the creator has decided to stick all but two of the turrets on the inside folds of the outer hull. This essentially blocks the turrets from being able to engage anything on the other side of the vessel, and only the frontmost turrets can shoot anything that's directly ahead as they are more or less blocking the turrets from behind from shooting past them. In this instance, I would be inclined to keep the top frontmost turret, but remove all the others. Yep, all of them. What I would do then, is I would add them back on again, but this time on the outermost parts of the hull, where their firing arcs aren't being obstructed by the hull of the vessel itself, or the turrets in front of them. I've also elevated the top middle turret, making it super fire over the one in front of it. Now the vessel can easily engage anything to the front and sides, and unlike before, it can also attack anything that's directly beneath it too. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than before, and it's probably the best we can do with such an awkward T or Y shaped design like this one. This next one is from Void Destroyer 2, and is actually not too bad. Apart from the usual, space is an ocean, let's add a bridge trope it's suffering from, the turret layout actually makes sense here, and shows that the creator understood both the importance of big guns versus lots of small ones, and the 3D battle space in which spacecraft fight in. As not only does it have super firing turrets, but it has them on both sides, much like the vessels from the TV series, The Expanse. Now, this is good because this lets the vessel blast away at enemies both in front of it and to the sides, both with its big guns and those smaller secondaries and point defence turrets. It does seem to have more turrets on the underside than on the top, but that may be due to the presence of that bridge. Overall, this is actually quite a good design, and suffice to say, I'm pleasantly surprised. Now, I have to admit that this one here is another one that I quite like. It has four primary turrets that, like with the previous vessel, can engage anything both to the front and the sides, along with many secondary turrets that, while numerous, are placed far enough apart and in such a way that they don't really block each other's arcs of fire. The only thing I'm not a big fan of in this one is that there are tiny point defence turrets hanging upside down along the split in the armour that runs along the side of the vessel. Those would have been better placed on a flat surface where they could see more of the surrounding space. Another thing I would do is remove that exaggerated bridge because it really isn't necessary, so that it would look more like this. Now both the top side and underside of the vessel are more or less the same, and both of those rearmost turrets can actually engage anything that's directly behind the ship too. Another thing I like about this vessel is that those, what I'm guessing are engine nacelles to the sides of the ship, are positioned in such a way that all four of those turrets can actually safely shoot past them. Unless, of course, a ship that's relatively small gets up really close, but by that time those smaller turrets should already be firing at it anyway. 
All in all, this is another good example of a spaceship that's been designed by someone who, for the most part, has a decent grasp of good turret placement, and I feel a lot of people can learn from this one. In conclusion, both ship design and turret placement is about common sense and trying not to get too caught up in the various trends or tropes that seem to be doing their rounds these days. Thankfully, we've got some good examples of what a semi-realistic, turreted warship is likely to look like, thanks in a big way to the Expanse TV series and the books, and also to the many content creators in the Steam Workshop, like Malmarid and Tideer, who have managed to break away from the space is an ocean trope, and more towards the reality of that space is, well, space. And you know what, that's something that all of us are going to have to come to terms with as we slowly expand into that realm and widespread interplanetary travel within our own solar system eventually becomes a reality. Well, until then, I hope that many of you have enjoyed this quick video and have gained a little more knowledge and insight into how you yourselves can design your sci-fi vessels and place your turrets more effectively in-game, whether you're playing Empyrean, Avorion, or Space Engineers. So until next time, I'd like to wish all my viewers, followers, and amazing subscribers out there all the very best, and hopefully I'll see you all again in the next video. Once again, this is Robertson, signing off.